Apparently these days you can write whatever the hell you want in a lawsuit. Or maybe that only is a thing if you're the richest man on earth. I don't know. But let's take a look at this thing. This is the lawsuit, Elon Musk versus Sam Altman et al. So this is all legal stuff. Basically, he's trying to get them for a breach of contract, trying to basically sever their relationship with Microsoft. Uh, I guess he used to be one of the funders of their project until they started getting funded by Microsoft. I'm gonna skip over a lot of the legal stuff because I... You know, I'm not a lawyer, but there are some things I wanted to discuss that I do actually have something to say about. So here on page, I guess, five of this document, starting in the late 2000s and early 2010s, an older algorithm called deep learning became practical to implement on low cost hardware for the first time. And it says this caused an almost overnight revolution in performance across nearly all AI projects. No, deep learning is just a classification of a type of neural network. Basically, it's a neural network that has more than three layers. That's what makes it deep. So a neural network that only has three layers would be a machine learning neural network and anything with four or more is deep learning. You can build a lot of things on top of a neural network. As far as AI projects, artificial intelligence as a field incorporates data science. It incorporates machine learning. It incorporates statistics. It incorporates a lot of stuff that is not technically deep learning. <laughs> um, so that's not quite true. And it says new top of class algorithms were developed for turning speech into text. So that would be a natural language processing algorithm. Translating between languages, same and recognizing what kind of food is shown in a photo. That would probably be a convolutional neural network. I did a video about that using my dog as the subject matter. I'll put a card so you can learn how those work. One of the hallmarks of deep learning is that algorithms do not need to be designed with significant knowledge of the task at hand. Uh, well, that's completely untrue. Look, data science is science. We would never build something just for shits and kicks. We always have a research problem or some sort of a question or a goal in mind. That's completely untrue as a statement. And it says they learn each task from training examples, essentially programming themselves. Again, this is not true. Every single algorithm is based on math. <laughs> we have not achieved the point and I think we can someday, but we have not achieved the point when algorithms can program themselves. We do have some that can potentially learn new things. None of the examples he gave in this paragraph are those algorithms, however. Natural language processing, anything that turns text into speech or translates between languages, those cannot program themselves. Those are based off of math. Those are neural networks and also convolutional neural networks. Those don't program themselves either. And I did one on the whiteboard without any computing by hand. I'll link a card to that for you to watch also. And here in this paragraph, he's saying that researchers have their sights set on what has come to be called artificial general intelligence. Well, that's, that is true. That is a goal that researchers are working toward. There is a problem and that is that we don't really have a definition of what that is. And he gives a sort of example here where he says the basic concept is a general purpose artificial intelligence system or a machine having intelligence for a wide variety of human tasks. Um, that is not good enough. If we're going to come up with a definition that we are all going to use and then say once we cross this specific line in the sand, we know that we have achieved AGI. We're going to have to come up with a much more specific definition than this because there are a lot of tasks that other humans can do that I cannot do. I recently hired contractors to remodel my kitchen because that's not a skill set I have. And I think a lot of those people would probably need to hire me if they needed like a machine learning algorithm because probably they can't do that. And the other thing is humans can be really to one another and do awful things. Humans can be wrong and make mistakes. We need to make a much better definition than this. Okay, it says, Mr. Musk has long recognized that AGI poses a grave threat to humanity. I can see why a guy who made his wealth off of squandering gems from uh, lower income countries could potentially think that human beings would create something 
that would be she, you know, like a human. I could see why he would think that would potentially pose a threat to humanity. This sentence right here is very worrisome to me. It says, where some like Mr. Musk see an existential threat, others see AGI as a source of profit and power. It's not binary like this. Those are not the only two options. There are some people, obviously, who see it as an existential threat. And there are some people who see it as a source of profit and power. But there are also people who are working on this because it's cool and interesting and we want to help our species and we want to do things that can be beneficial to humanity. And now it goes into Google DeepMind. Now Google DeepMind has absolutely nothing to do with Sam Altman or Elon Musk. So I'm not sure why he brings it in except for, I guess, just to add context. Um, it does kind of talk about the history of reinforcement learning Learning, which is a different type of algorithm than a neural network. Uh, usually it's classified as a machine learning algorithm. People have been classifying it as deep learning. I'm not sure it really matters. Basically how that works is you tell an algorithm a task you want it to do and then you give it a penalty for being wrong or a reward for being right. And so Google created AlphaZero, which played chess, and then they created AlphaGo, which played Go, and they recently came out with Alpha Geometry, which I was very honest about in my video when I said that that honestly kind of scared the shit out of me. And I was also serious when I came up with some examples of what it could be useful for. And so it's interesting that this is in the lawsuit because one of the examples I had in that video of what an application potentially of the Alpha Geometry algorithm could be was driverless cars, which obviously Elon Musk would have a interest in having an algorithm them that would be able to improve his absolutely dismal driverless cars technology. If QSTAR is like Alpha Geometry, which I think it is, then I can see why Elon Musk would want QSTAR because profit and power. <laughs> so when you stack a reinforcement learning algorithm on the back of a LLM, which is what Alpha Geometry did, that's when you start getting algorithms that have the potential for critical thinking skills. And that's what was a little scary to me about Alpha Geometry and that is what people were scared of originally with QSTAR was that they thought it was a way for it to have this ability. And so if that's what Elon Musk's worried about and he wants to stop QSTAR before this whole thing can become public or before the whole thing can be released, it already is released because Alpha Geometry has been released publicly. Anybody can go to Google's GitHub page and download it and play with it. Now, the other thing I will say, they did talk about how it used synthetic data. But if algorithms can learn without data and just use synthetic data, I can see why a dude who bought a social media platform for $44 billion, essentially for the data, why he would want QSTAR.